fan of football or soccer. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, at NRG this week, starting Saturday, it is Costa Rica versus Colombia. Colombia. And Friday yes. night, it is Mexico, Mexico versus Venezuela. Yes. And then on the 21st is the semis. The semifinal, yes. And yet to be determined. So yes. Martha is going to be my special guest. You know? <laughs> And I'm okay with that. Good to go to the game. So we've got some we've got some fantastic games that are going to be in the city of Houston. Uh, and then of course as we move forward during the summer and we get ready for the Super Bowl, but there's some fantastic things that happen in the city. And so I want to encourage everyone to go out to NRG uh, starting this Saturday and uh, and really welcome our international guests into our city. Uh, having said that, let me let me just start to take whatever uh, questions you all may have. Um, for people arriving, I think there's going to be a new exhibit, uh, art exhibit at the uh, airport. We accepted, uh, I think it was called the Edge of Sky or something exhibit, an article, item nine. I am not advised. That's, that's the item we pulled off the agenda, but it is a donation by Brooke Kirkland, who is the Renovating Allen Center, and they're donating that artwork to us. We'll, okay. we'll get you the information. Okay. Yeah, okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. Uh, no problem. <laughs> Mayor, can you speak to the green uh, green corridor for Yale Street? And yes. Uh, so apparently, it's never been used that designation. This will be this will be the first. I think this will be the first designation of this kind in this in the city, uh, which I think is a, is exciting. And uh, the emphasis is kind of to preserve trees and and the green canopy that exists within our city, uh, but to do it in such a way that's very compatible uh, with the people uh, uh, in that corridor to make sure, for example, that uh, it's done with their with their support, uh, and primarily the business owners, since that's, those are the ones who are going to be directly impacted uh, by what they cannot do. And then, of course, the residential owners get up, you know, they can uh, weigh in as well. Uh, today was the public hearing on it, at least the first, but I anticipated it would probably be, it could be two to three weeks before the city council is actually voting on the ordinance. We want to make sure that uh, everybody is on notice and aware of what we are doing and that we have a good uh, uh, determination that it, it is being done with, with the support of the people along that corridor. But it's uh, certainly would add to our, our green space canopy within the city, and then I think city council members and their constituents can decide whether or not they want to duplicate it in other parts of the city. What's the role of the city when, when uh, a street is designated a green corridor? Well, basically, I mean, we have to go through the uh, petition process. You know, people have to be notified. I mean, Congressman kind of Stoddick is out there, and she's big on the process, making sure that people are notified and people are uh, buy in to what we attempt to do. You can do some good things, uh, but you can't do the good things without making sure that everybody's a part of it. Uh, so the city's role is to make sure that the process is one that of notifying the people that we're getting their consent by way of the petition process. Uh, hearing from them, like we heard from several today, who are in support of the Green Corridor, and then uh, after we are assured that everybody's fully aware, or you know, that we've given them uh, an opportunity to, to be aware, uh, that then members of City Council will make a vote on it, and and that vote I would suspect will probably be in two or three weeks. But our role is to, is to establish a credible process, provide notice, and then to act on it. Does it? I mean, does it mean that? Will the city be providing more trees, or just not touch the road, or I mean, what exactly? Is it? Uh, it's, well, it's extra protection. Yeah, yeah, I think it's protection for the trees that currently exist, yeah. and I think we, the, the ordinance is intended uh, to provide the determination of what trees ought to be protected. So I think that's primarily it. It's protecting the the the, the tree canopy in many, in many ways along Yale Street, kind of many ways like mm -hmm. on the north side. Uh, I mean, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful canopy, and it's, the, the trees are um, uh, 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 have aged over the years. Very nice. I mean, provide beautiful uh, shade and uh, making it very attractive when you drive down Yale Street. So I think the whole, the gist of the of the green space corridor uh, is to protect is to protect those trees that have aged over the years, the landscape, so to speak. It's uh, to follow up a bit. Is this being pushed so? Is this a bit of a pilot program? Do you want to extend this to other neighborhoods? I think, think I think that the potential is there to extend it. I think I think some of the city council members even talked about uh, it being something that they may want to see in their particular districts. 
uh, but it's, it's, it, if, to the extent it's extended, it will be extended at the request of people that live in the area. This is not where uh, those of us here, mayor and city council members, are going to say, this is what we want in your geographical area. Uh, this is where the people in the community, people along the streets, the corridor, are asking us to do it and simply asking us to ratify something that they already want. But this is not something that I see as mayor of the city, me imposing it on any particular neighborhood. You'd be horrible at running North Korea. <laughs> uh, uh, I wanted to get an update on how the flood uh, yes. monies are being distributed. How is that going? Can you give us an update? I know I you spoke the other day, but yes. what's the latest? I think it's coming along for, for fairly well. And I, uh, number one, certainly when, when we came to the uh, April the 18th flood uh, and the aftermath, we were able to expend dollars to assist 137 plus families, close to 400 people putting them in in uh, living accommodations, hotel and extended stays. The cost of that was right around $400,000. Uh, we spent it about uh, uh, another 75000 at the Houston Furniture Bank uh, for necessities and items that uh, many families need, the essentials and uh, things of that nature. So that's been done. Uh, United Way is kind of like a principal partner for us. And they have notified all of the other agencies, like the Catholic Charities and others, the things that they have expended monies for, and then they can turn around and, and uh, send invoices to the Greater Houston Stone uh, Relief Fund for a possible reimbursement. So we're still waiting for, for those receipts to come in and don't quite know what those tallies will be, but we'll do the best we can with the dollars that we have left. And then just like with Councilman Martin in Green in Kingswood, there are three of the communities in his area have flooded two and three times since April the 18th, and I want to make sure that the people in his areas are connected with some of these nonprofits because we, we, we can't provide checks or the Greater Houston Storm Relief Fund and Advisory Board can provide checks directly to people. They kind of have to go through one of these partners, uh, but we certainly want to assist people in the Kingwood area uh, uh, that are having problems. And then we'll wait to see what sort of requests we get from, from people in like um, um, Fort Bend, Harris County and all these because we, we, we've opened up really funding as well.